Welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Heather Isbron, and with me today is Gregory Dean, Chief for Seattle Fire Department. Welcome, Chief. Thank you. So, uh, Homeland Security's been around for six years. You've been in the fire service for... 38 years. Wow. And uh, can you t give a little background about how it, uh, Homeland Security integrated with the fire service? Well, the fire service has been doing a lot of the same things over the years, and Homeland Security kind of tied right in with it. It allowed us to um, to take a look at our training, take a look at how we um, how we purchase our equipment, uh, even before um, Homeland Security got formed. If you remember, we had the Oklahoma bombings, and we started forming urban search and rescue teams. So we've been involved in uh, on the parameter of how do we do business, and so so now Homeland Security has actually focused us so that we actually are looking at our partners more. So it used to be fire and occasionally police. Now, because of the pandemic and some of the others, we're looking at a health department. Uh, we're de dealing more with emergency management. And some of the players we never thought about before, such as uh, critical infrastructure and, and how the regions work together and how do we overlap each other. And that's really what Homeland Security's done for us. It's forced us to come outside our own silos and look at other agencies. And so as you're developing all these new relationships and, and initiatives and trainings, uh, can you give me some best practices, some examples of, of what's working? Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's, I mean, I, I think I'd break it down in certain areas. I mean, first I'd look at it from uh, partnerships and the fact that uh, once we got into Homeland Security, we um, started being uh, forced not only to work within the city of Seattle, but we worked within our county. And we formed a county team, which was called Region 6 up there in Seattle. And all the county agencies got together and started working. And then we, uh, and for us as a department, we had, um, I served on that team. We had people serving on the state team. And we have a number of our people that are involved nationally. We've also had a number of our people involved um, with the NPS itself. And, and we're trying to use those people to, um, to change our thinking. I have met with the police chief recently. And we both have graduates from NPS. And so we talked about, could we form a think tank? And instead of it being a police officer and a firefighter, could they be Homeland Security people that have a discipline in uh, police and fire? So we're trying to change our thinking up there in that, in that regard. So that's the partnership side of it. The other side of it that we think is important is the training. And we've had, a, uh, we've had some drills that I think that have really prepared us better we had what we called a marine terrorism drill, where we had a ferry that had a bomb go off in the middle of the bay. And so we were forced to work with the port authorities, the Coast Guard, the police, the health department. How would we do that and how would we manage that? And we had all our players there dealing with that. Uh, two years ago, we had a drill at the University of Washington, the football stadium, hold 70,000 people. We said, let's have a drill there and see what happens if we have a biohazard. How would we move people? And so. We, we brought in the National Guard, we brought in um, the Health Department, again, a lot of agencies, and we were forced to work together to communicate. And it was the hot, one of the hottest days, in, for Seattle anyway, <laughs> of the year. And, and so we had to, how do you keep people cool? How do you keep people moving? How do you do your exercises? How does police do security? Um, we live in an earthquake country. Mm -hmm. We had a drill because our viaduct is, is susceptible to earthquake. So we used our technical rescue team to be able to, and all our people have been trained at awareness low, how do you get in between all the fallen material to bring people down? And, and that's really you know, how you, how you kind of make this work is make it interoperable and how do you plan for things like that. Wow. Can you tell me a little bit about the Fire Service Intelligence Enterprise? This last summer uh, in New York City, a number of the major mo metropolitan fire departments were invited back to New York City to have a discussion on how the fire service can be more involved in the intelligence gathering and should we be involved in the intelligence gathering. Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting that our needs are different than law enforcement. We don't really need to know who, who, they're, who the bad guy is. What we need to know is what their plans are. I use an example to, for why I think Seattle should be involved. We had a, an event at the, at the Jackson Federal uh, Building where the federal government was aware that there was a bomb threat there. But the locals, the police and fire, were not aware of that. Had we been aware of that, we either would have created a pre-fire on-site or a pre-fire off-site to prepare our resources. So having that information allows us to be better prepared for when things happen based on the information available. And when I was back in New York City, 
all the fire departments were saying the same thing. So we have we met there in August. We uh, came back and um, we've assigned different people to work on that. They just had a meeting recently in Washington, D.C. with our staff. There's another meeting coming up in, in March that we'll all be involved in. And what we're trying to do is say, how do we get our piece of the information to, to help protect our people so we can provide a better service to our citizens? At the same time, we are dealing internally with our people who are questioning this are we becoming police officers? Right. And, and, the, and the answer is real simple for us, is that our job is to protect the public. And any information we come across doing our duties, it's important that we share that information also. And so that's the answer that, you know, that we're, we're, we're talking about nationally. But what we hope is that we will have more firefighters and fusion centers. We're hoping that, that um, we will each learn to appreciate how we use the information instead of waiting for somebody to tell you what they think you should know and it's difficult if they don't understand your discipline. Right. Well the whole national debate about civil rights and, and mm -hmm. the fire service and it's been a hot topic I'm sure will continue to be going forward. It, and it should be. I mean I, I think that having the conscious um, conversation says that we're actually thinking about it and we're not just you know falling into it or it happened to us. We're actually having an impact on what decisions are being made. And the fire service has, um, has, you know, we see a lot of buildings. We're in a lot of things, and our people should be aware. I mean, we currently do it to a certain degree. We do it with domestic violence. We do it if we find, um, you know, marijuana grow plants. We do it when we, um, you know, when we're out there seeing things. So knowing that you should share that information is a piece that needs to be added on to all this. Right. Well, how do you see a way forward for the fire service in, uh, in regards to homeland security? Uh, you're the chief of a major urban area d department, and uh, the next five years, what's, what's in store for you in terms of challenges? Well, I think challenges are trying to keep our people's interests at the same time because, you know, as we talk about the nation and, and are they becoming more um, losing their energy because we haven't had another attack. Well, we have the same issue in the fire service. On top of that, we have the issue of our firefighters are fighting fire, and they're saying, are you spending enough time in learning how to fight fire? And so our challenge is to continue to concentrate on things that we see a large variety of, but also make sure that we spend time on those things we don't see a lot of. And there's a lot of correlation in the training. I mean, you know, I, we try to say to our people, what we're using for an earthquake, you can use for a major disaster. If somebody was to, you know, the Space Needle is our, is our big icon in Seattle. If someone was to um, either blow the Space Needle up or it was to fall down, you'd have the same issue at the end of the day. Right. So what skills do you have? How do you maintain those skills? And then how do you um, keep your relationships with the region? So we're involved and we continue to be involved regionally. So to me, I think for the fire service, it's not losing the momentum to be regionally involved, not only with other fire services, but with other agencies outside the fire service, while maintaining that basic piece of training on what firefighters see on a daily basis, because you have to make sure they're well trained in their day-to-day -day business. We had a conversation earlier today on, on NIMS, mm -hmm. and for the fire service, we're very fortunate. We practice it on every alarm so that when we have the major event, we're able to use it. Well, actually, if you were to kind of change your thinking, we actually do that on a lot of things. You know, a victim trapped, whether that victim's trapped because their car did it or something else did it, how do you do that? How do you manage that scene? It's an important piece of everything. Right. So that's, that's really, to me, in the next five years, I see us trying to stay focused on our, our core business while still using the peripheral to, to learn other things. And, you know, you heard me say about a think tank. Right. I think the think tank is an important piece of all that. People looking that had had the training in the Homeland Security, looking out and saying, "Hey, let's have a dialogue about this, and how can we use it?" So the training they've received here is something I think is important for all departments to be aware of. How can you make sure that your department is prepared for the future while still dealing with your day-to-day -day tasks? Right. We have a lot to do. Always. <laughs> thank you for your time today. Well, thank you for inviting me.